Everything is a being. We are surrounded by beings. We are not alone here. When we understand that, then technology takes on an entirely different motivation because it's no longer that we need to impress our design onto a world that has none. No longer that we need to impose our intelligence onto a world that in itself is just kind of a random melee of force and mass. But understanding that it already has an intelligence, already has the qualities of a self, already has maybe a purpose or even a desire or a dream, then our role becomes no longer mastery and domination because why not if it's just a bunch of forces out there, a bunch of generic particles? No longer. No longer. Now it becomes a matter of participation, of co-creation. So the first step in doing that is what? It's listening, observing. What are we called to do? How can we, how can we participate in the dream, in the dream of the earth, in what wants to be born here? That's a completely different motivation for technology. It doesn't mean that we will not use technology because Gaia gave birth to humanity for a reason with all of our gifts. We're not a superfluous or wrong or bad species. Every species has a necessary gift to give toward the maintenance of the health of the whole and toward the evolution and development of the whole. And we are no exception. So what do, these, these tremendous gifts that we have, technology and culture that have allowed us to do so much damage, what is their real purpose? That's, I don't have an answer for that, but I have the question. And I want all of us to start asking that question. What is our service? What is ours to do? In the near term, I think it's obvious. In the near term, it is what I said, to protect, preserve, regenerate life on earth. After that, I don't know, but I know that there's something because I know that we are not nature's big mistake or the exception to the rule that every species has a part to play.